Hello and welcome to This One Thing, a daily devotional brought to you by First Presbyterian Church of Fort Lauderdale. My name is John Bach, and I'm the Youth and College Ministry Assistant. Today is Monday, August 17th, 2020, which is the first week back to school for, for many of our students here in South Florida. Where did the time go? I'm excited and honored to be with you all in spirit and in truth. God is either everything or he is nothing. God is either everywhere or he is nowhere. These are statements that were taught to me early on during the transitional stage of my restored life. I have experienced both extremes in the past 29 years. And let me tell you, one is extravagantly different than the other. Living without the presence or belief in God caused a lot of conflicts and destruction. Whereas living as though God is the central fact of my life, it's revolutionized everything. Here's an example. We all engage with difficult people, right? And some of them could even be in our own families or close friends at times, coworkers. It is not rare to become frustrated or to acquire resentments towards people in our lives. Sometimes they rightfully give us a, a reason to. Other times our own selfishness, ego, fear, delusion, these things create unhealthy separations that only cause anguish and hardships in our own hearts. People have told me that a resentment is equivalent to wishing poison upon another person, but drinking the poison yourself. One of the monumental concepts that has completely changed my life is the idea of praying for people that are difficult. Praying for the sick, to me, does not only mean praying for those with physical ailments or illnesses. Intimate and truthful prayer, one-on-one -on -one with the creator of the universe, does something. It either changes us, changes the person we are praying for, changes circumstances, or sometimes all of the above. I believe the most selfless act you can do for another person is to pray for them, wholeheartedly pray. I don't mean just praying because you were told to pray or you're checking it off your to-do list or it makes you feel better. I mean deep and effective, faithful prayers for someone who has harmed you, whether it's fancied or real. Have you ever tried doing this for two weeks straight, I encourage you to try this sometime and then observe what God does with it. One of our scripture readings in the Revised Common Lectionary today is in the book of Acts, chapter 7, verse 44 to chapter 8, verse 1. And in this story, a man named Stephen is in conflict with a large crowd of people. This audience is hatefully disagreeing with Stephen, who is filled with the Holy Spirit and speaking truth and love to a suffering group of gatherers. These people decide to stop Stephen from preaching for good by dragging him out of the city and stoning him to death. Listen to what Stephen prayed while they were stoning him. Lord, receive my spirit. Do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he died. Now this is a heavy story, but a meaningful example. And the one thing I want us to pull away from it is this. If God is at the forefront of our lives, 
There is nothing, no person, no obstacle, no hardship that can pull us away from his grace and mercy, which grants us the ability to show that same unconditional forgiveness to all people, even enemies, by praying with intention and purity. This is a spiritual discipline that separates the men from the boys, per se, or, or, or the women from the girls. Simple, but not easy. A price has to be paid in our journey towards spiritual growth. Will you join me? Thank you for listening. Have an inspired week.